Hi, this is Gary Rosenzweig with Flash Game University, FlashGameU.com. And I had an earlier tutorial about a toggle button. And the toggle button worked very simply like this. You ran the movie and you basically had a button, you can roll over it, click on it and it would toggle to another state, click on it again and it would toggle back. Very good simple example. But I had a reader write in and want to know how to expand on that and actually have music play when you press the button. But it's not as simple as that, as the the uh, email pointed out, of course, because you should be able to stop. When, when it stops, the music should stop. But also, when the music's finished playing, it should automatically go back to the state. So in other words, uh, run the movie, and you press play to start playing the music. You can stop it, you can play again, and we'll start playing the music again. And then if the music automatically gets to the end of where it's playing, the button should toggle back. Okay, so let's go and see how we can modify this code to do that. We've got the basic toggle button code here. You can go back and look at that tutorial if you like. But it toggles button back and forth. And I left spaces here for where things are done during the off state and then the on state. So let's start to add some things in. In the library, I've added a sound. And the sound is just basically called uh, test song. Um, I'll show you the properties for it. Here's the properties for it. Test song.aaf. And I told it to export fraction script and with the class test song. So now I can actually play the music. I'm going to create a function, a new function, that will uh, go ahead and start the song and another to stop the song. So I'm going to put that here at the bottom. I'm going to copy and paste in just to make things go quicker. So here are the two new functions. Start song here will go ahead and uh, basically uh, assign, uh, take song.play and uh, we'll assign that to a sound channel. Now. Where does this come from? Well, we need some variables first. So let me go ahead and grab the variables I've added. We go to the top of this behavior. And it's not really behavior, it's just a script. We go to the top and we see, OK, we're going to create a new variable called song. This is type sound. It's going to be new test song. This is the name of the sound class that we assigned it in the library. Then we're also going to create a sound channel that's just going to be of type sound channel. And we're not going to assign that any value. So song basically holds a link to the actual piece of music we want to play. We go down here and we say, OK, so song play, that returns a sound channel. It's basically, it's saying play the sound and create a sound channel for it. So we store that in the sound channel variable. And then we'll skip this next line for now. We'll look here at song stop. You act, don't actually tell the song to stop. You tell the channel it created to stop, the song channel stop. So this is how to basically play a song here. We store it here. And then to stop it, we issue this command. So this is what will happen now if we actually put start song here. We put stop song here. And now we save the movie and we run it. I uh, see that we need to, uh, ah, yes, because I have this line here. We'll comment that out, just saving that for later. So now we go ahead and we hit play. And we have a song that plays. We'd stop and it stops. And the next thing we want to do is we actually want the button to return to the stop state when the song stops playing by itself. That's where this line comes in. So we're basically saying here, um, add an event listener for the sound channel. And the only event listener for sound channels is event dot song or sound complete. And then we give it the handler that we want it to call when this happens. So it's going to call song complete handler. Let's go ahead and create that function. And again, I'll just paste it in to save time. Your song complete handler. It accepts an event, even though we don't use the event, we need to accept it anyway. And what we're going to do is, well, the sound's done, so we don't have to do anything with that. We just want to actually do the same stuff that we're doing here, setting the button state to off. And then we need to use this line also here to actually change the button state to off. So now we run and we play, and it goes through its uh, two measures of the song. You'll see it automatically change to play. There you go. That was the complete song. As soon as it got to the end, it hit that. We can also stop it beforehand. So you basically have the expected behavior here just by adding these three functions, uh, referring to the functions in the proper place, and then also having to add these song and song channel variables there. And then, of course, the sound itself. Now we have a toggle button that controls a single piece of music. You could change the start and stop 
uh, here to actually call external files. In Chapter 2 of the book, Flash uh, ActionScript 3.0 Game Programming University, there's an example of using external files. And actually, the Flash uh, CS3 help is filled with examples uh, of using external files for, for sounds to play. So you can certainly substitute code here to start and stop the sounds. Um, and that also uses a sound channel as well, so this event listener technique will work for those. So there you go. This is Gary Rosenzweig with Flash Game University with a more complex, uh, complex song playing toggle button. Thanks a lot. Bye.